Welcome to Spa Talk, the show that will increase your certainty by exploring the science, the philosophy, and the art of our chiropractic profession. I'm Dr. Michelle Krinick, and my special guest today is Dr. Courtney Gowan. Dr. Gowan is a graduate of Parker University, 2013. She has opened two practices, has two beautiful children, a great husband, and why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, yes, graduated 2013 and just hit the ground running. We opened three months after graduation, as soon as I got that license, and have been rocking and rolling ever since. Um, have two little girls that were born at home, and uh, we have just been going like crazy with them and uh, just recently moved out to a farm um, and we're <laughs> practicing sustainable living and uh, doing our own beef, our own eggs, our own vegetables, uh, things like that and um, opened up uh, free to be chiropractic and have been in practice I guess four years now and then along with that journey that we've been on I have opened the nest which is also just the most amazing uh, journey that God has kind of paved the way for. Um, and we have a midwife, we have six doulas, we have doula training, we have a birth photographer, a newborn photographer, belly binding, a placenta encapsulation, two massage therapists, a naturopath, two <laughs> chiropractors, and a space for baby showers and wedding showers. And then last week, we opened a second location in Waxahachie, which is really exciting. Um, mine it's right by the farm and so <laughs> a little closer than home than addison uh but yeah it has been such a journey and it has been so much fun and i love chiropractic so much and i'm so thankful to be here oh we're thankful you're here too yeah and we, we can see you love chiropractic there's mm -hmm. no doubt i can see your passion and i've known you for a long time and long i've time. always known how passionate you are is there something different or unique about your story that you think might help a current chiropractor? Because, you know, our goal really is to help yes. current chiropractors, but also those students that are trying to figure everything yes, out. So, so well, much. Is there anything the unique about your story? You know, I think the most unique thing is you and I have that in common. It's just starting from almost nothing. Um, I will tell you a story um, about my uh, just my love of chiropractic and love of life and things like that. I uh, met my husband in February, was moving to California to open a practice, had my business plan, had everything all set up, just, I yes, this is what I'm going to do on the beach in California and just live a life where I could walk to the beach, walk to my practice, and just have no stress at all. <laughs> 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 but country dancing out at Red River on in February, met this guy, and with one look, we literally fell in love. He proposed 60 days later in Paris, France, and uh, we got married six months later in, um, in a barn. <laughs> so with that journey, uh, we came back with from our honeymoon, graduated in December um, with $54 in our bank account. And I had saved about five, $6,000 from student loans every uh, trimester, put that back. And I, I didn't want to work for somebody else. I wanted that freedom of living my own life and my own practice and stuff like that. So I said, we're going for this and we're doing it here in Dallas and it's going to happen. Um, and so my husband sat with me and he said, what do you really want? What do you want? And I said, I want to practice out of an old house and I want to see uh, pregnant moms. I want to see families. I want to see just all walks of life, life of people. And I want to work three days a week and make a good living. And he was like, what? <laughs> I was like, this is chiropractic. I can do this. <laughs> um, and so uh, we uh, did everything. We And uh, when we get back to kind of talk about manifesting and things like that and goals, um, I found this place on Craigslist, walked up to this lady <laughs> that was this old building, this old, beautiful blue house. And I walked in and I said, Hey, I haven't graduated yet, but I really love this space and I'm supposed to be here. How much is rent? <laughs> she was like, a uh, $1,000 a month. And I go, I can't do that. Will you take 800? And she goes, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so she saved the spot for me. Um, and we started paying rent on January 1st and I didn't go into the space until April. And so it was a leap of faith um, that we jumped into this practice and into chiropractic, just no reservations, feet first, no looking back. And uh, we did the build out ourselves. 
We started in this tiny little thousand square foot basement and now we're in a three level, 3,000 square feet of a prenatal wellness center uh, rocking and rolling. So it, literally to students, I say you don't need a lot of money. Some people, some programs, some uh, techniques require it, but the way that we did it, we did it five, six thousand dollars, the program, the table, the software, the everything, and just that you can do it and to believe in yourself and to really understand that it takes a lot of hard work and it's a marathon um, and just trust in chiropractic and the philosophy that brought you here. Wow, you you came full on. The, yeah. The first question. <laughs> Sorry. No, this is awesome. I think that is what where we have one of our biggest connections is yeah. we learn those things early, which I we think did. that a lot of times when you come out of school, or most of the time, you envision something, all these fancy, big, expensive things, where yes. you know. Very similar to your story, I started with $5,000 to yeah. my name, right? But mm -hmm. as I grew and as I needed more space, I got more space. But Absolutely. really, the the patient cares about mm -hmm. us and who we are and if we can yes. help them, Absolutely. right? You need a table and a Your place, hands. right? Your hands, mm -hmm. yeah. And so low overhead is something I really do recommend to 100%. those students or even the doctors now that are having a hard time, yes. right? And also something you said that I really liked, just putting it out there, you can be the chiropractor you want to be. And that's what I tell incoming students that's mm -hmm. so awesome is you can be the chiropractor you want to be. You can have the office you want. If you want to wear, you know, a beach theme shirt every day, if Absolutely. you want to. I mean, that's what's really we don't neat wear about shoes. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, so you don't wear shoes. And I think that's what helps us uh, be a healer and resonate in our space and, mm -hmm. and, you know, be who we are supposed to be by being yes. Yes. who we are. And chiropractic is all about being who you are fully alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you get to that space of not caring and just really uh, innately expressing your life and who you're supposed to be, uh, people, that gives others the permission to let go and whether that's their healing or their life or their path, that allows them to get into that as well after your example. So that's a really cool thing that chiropractic allows us to do. It's true. It, now, you have a great story. Uh, so we know what you did after graduation, mm -hmm. but if there was anything you could go back and do differently, yes. is there anything you would do differently or you just appreciate all the things that happened? You know, I'm going to go demartini on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Um, there was one day where I walked into my office and there was a foot of water on the ground. My <laughs> table, my software, everything was underwater because we were in a basement. Um, and at that point, I just almost lost it because it was maybe six months in and I had put my whole life into this and it was so terrible. But it, what it did, it made me resilient and we put towels for patients to walk <laughs> on as little islands. And I still saw people that day. <laughs> and they probably were happy. Yeah. And those people are there. still with me today, uh, three or four years into it. And uh, we get to look back on it and laugh. Um, at the time we were crying, but mm -hmm. <laughs> everything happens for you and not to you. Right. And so I'm, I'm a firm believer. So no, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. I, I've enjoyed this journey so far. And being genuine with your patients. I mean, they're going to, mm -hmm. they, gonna they know. know when you're there yeah. to help them, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is there anything in life or in practice that you, this is kind of a double question that you sure. are doing now mm -hmm. that you weren't doing before mm -hmm. that you wish you would have been. And then are the things that you were doing before mm -hmm. that you aren't doing now yeah. Um, so what I would definitely say that I've adopted most days of the week is a morning routine and just getting okay. up and any coach or anybody that you kind of talk to is how you start your day off is kind of sets the tone for everything. Um, and we just moved out to this farm. And so getting up early, we're able to work out, meditate, pray, uh, be outside, be with nature, be with the animals, get the eggs. Just like it's just such a great way to get up and start your day. I haven't always been like that. And so mm -hmm. just setting that tone, uh, mind you, it's our only time together without babies. <laughs> <laughs> and so doing that um, and then just goal setting, vision setting and things like that um, is a big part of my life and manifesting um, your dreams into reality that I would say has been congruent that I've done from chiropractic school that I learned from the principles on into life now. Right. Do you get up every morning at the same time? I try to. Okay. Yes. And so yeah. is this, this is what I'm going to do, or is it written down? Because I've seen some people that do that For planning sure. and they do five minutes doing this and 10 minutes doing yes. this. Is it that regimented or is it? Girl, the practice, my practice is called free to be. <laughs> That's kind of who I am. <laughs> Perfect. So you have um, a routine in mind. Yes, but a if... mind, but it's written in pencil. Okay. And if I need to change it, then I'll change it. And then if it just completely goes off uh, the charts and a baby wakes up screaming, then it's okay. We're, we just, we flow with life. <laughs> okay. Is there anything that you feel like you were doing before 
uh, that you aren't doing now and that has helped or you took it out of your life or those mm-hmm. kind of distracting anything like that? Um, gosh, not that I can really think of. Mm-hmm. I think I've been pretty congruent through. Um, I just feel like I've gotten better at a few things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just the way that I talk to myself too, mentally, um, I've taken out the self negative talk. I think that that's been a big part of my healing and a big part of, um, and believing in myself because even, um, five, maybe two, three, five years ago, it was just, I'm not good enough. I'm not here. And I think as students, we will talk to ourselves like that or Mm -hmm. as anybody as individuals and stopping and cutting that out gives you the potential to thrive and to see the positive in your life and what you're doing. And so that was a big part and a big change of what I've cut out and uh, replaced those negative thoughts with uh, joy and peace. Right. And so it was negative self-talk just, uh, yeah. just as far as being a chiropractor. and Yeah. That, okay. Or I'm not good enough for this. Or maybe I can't do this with right. this much money. Or maybe I can't run a mm-hmm. practice or things like that. And once I stopped believing that, I was able to step into the potential to thrive. Right. Well, this in this podcast, that's our goal is really to increase that certainty. And sometimes I, mm-hmm. I ask myself how to increase that certainty. And so what would you say? And it's kind of throwing this at you. Uh, but yeah, for what sure. What would you say change that? I mean, how can we teach these students or even mm-hmm. current chiropractors to be certain, to build that certainty? What do you think is the foundation, the building foundation of building mm-hmm. the certainty that what we do is amazing Absolutely. and you can change lives? And I think that the foundation is getting back to the foundation, um, getting back into the true root philosophy of what BJ was talking about and what DD founded and um, getting back to those quotes and getting back to that literature and things like that. I think that whenever you truly dive into vitalism and you truly dive into the science and the philosophy of chiropractic, your art shines through in a genuine way. Um, And so I think that that's important to just get back and to really emphasize to students to get into the philosophy and to really understand it and live it and allow it to change your life. For me, it changed my life and that I believe that the body was designed to heal and have normal physiological processes, including birth. And so that's, it was chiropractic that led me to a home birth and it was chiropractic that gave me that certainty. Um, And so I think that that's something to get back to the foundation um, and build upon that. Right. So when someone asks you what philosophy means to you, is that kind of what you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just um, definitely my faith, number one, but also the philosophy of chiropractic is um, what I do every day. It's how I speak to myself. It's how I speak to people. It's how I move and how I just live. You know, mm-hmm. it's such a, a, a resounding, encompassing um, ideal that can change people's lives. Right. So if a student asks you, I'm just throwing new questions. Okay, <laughs> oh, you know, here we go. <laughs> is, what is the philosophy yep. of chiropractic? That the body is self-healing and self-regulating. And through the chiropractic adjustment, we are allowed to connect people to live at 100%. We're done. No, we're done. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I think it's really good because that is a big question. And, yeah. and so many people are scared of that word philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it's scary. They think they can't talk about it. And, it, yeah. and you know, we shouldn't learn it. And so exactly. that's just important because actually, like Jen Tempo says, that mm-hmm. it is a science and yeah. you know, a philosophy. It's really. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why I wanted to ask you. And that was awesome. very good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's how you feel, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are what is some good advice or some advice that mm-hmm. you would give? And I'm asking you as a student and doctor, but what's some advice yeah. you'd give to a student? And it could be try mm-hmm. one, try eight, just, yes. just in general. Um, uh, what we talked about, just stay true to the philosophy and then uh, don't get down on yourself. It's a hard program. Um, it's something that it's the most trying three years, three and a half years of your life, but you will look back on it. And you'll see that it flew by. Um, So live in the moment and don't take yourself too damn seriously. (laughs) I think that that's important thing that looking back on and even in life, we never get out alive. Um, So I think it's important to (laughs) not put that stress and that expectation on yourself. There is a healthy amount. But even as we get into practice, um, it's okay. Right. It's going to be okay. Right. So that's what I tell a lot of people. <laughs> that's good. I guess that could apply also even to current yeah. doctors, whether they're having a Absolutely. hard time or struggling or even 100%. when they're doing fine. And but is there something that you would give to current doctors? Because there are some that are struggling. Maybe mm-hmm. they're having a hard time, whether it be their overhead's too high, they yeah. don't have a strong certainty or philosophy. Yeah. I mean, what's something you think that mm-hmm. some advice you'd give to doctors? I would say that it is a marathon and it's something that you just take it day by day and you love 
the person in front of you on the table at that moment. You treat everyone as your mother, brother, father, sister, and uh, you uh, love them in that moment. You treat them as family and that resounding present time consciousness and that love that you give to them will inspire them. And then that's how our practice really does grow is through referrals and through um, people really um, recommending you because chiropractic is so hands-on it's so personal Mm -hmm. um so whenever someone says oh you need to see my chiropractor you're probably Mm going to listen to that person um rather than spending thousands of dollars on ads and things like that um treating every person one person at a time in that moment and loving them in that space that kind of goes into my what i was going to ask you next is really how how do you feel like has been your best way to bring new patients in the office mm-hmm. but you said referral and that's how referral. my office is yeah. also but we is don't that... pay for any advertising we mm-hmm. started from that it's a slow way to grow a practice right. but it's a lasting way right. to grow a practice i totally agree with that you see people throughout their entire lives their famous families and our goal is to have a generational practice to where we are seeing mothers throughout their pregnancy and then uh, we see that if it's a girl that daughter throughout her pregnancy and her mm-hmm. baby so just to create that generational mindset um of just lifetime just seeing you as their family chiropractor right and i think that the biggest way that i can tell you i have a referral based practice too but yeah. it's in educating the people so you know Absolutely. someone can be sitting there with for five minutes with me and in those five minutes they're already like i want to bring in my kids yeah. and my Absolutely. aunt my uncle my cousin and so they yeah. because because we teach and we educate them mm-hmm. on what chiropractic really is it's yes. not they may come in for pain but when you educate them and say hey this is what it is yeah and they want that yeah doctor you know? is teacher right like we are here mm-hmm. to teach people and then that just builds it like you said maybe mm-hmm. a little bit slower but I mean, that's okay. It's, yeah, lasting. it's the ones that last for a yeah, long time. They what, get it. What grows quickly? Cancer cells, cancerous mm-hmm. things, things mm-hmm. that don't last. What grows slowly? Trees with deep roots um, that grow and last. You need so many good, <laughs> good takeaways for, <laughs> for us today. <laughs> so uh, for students or doctors, what would you say? Because we use quotes a lot, right? In for chiropractic sure. and principles yes. and all of that, which yeah. is awesome because, yeah. again, lead philosophy. Mm-hmm. But what would you say is one of your favorite quotes? I really like the quote. Um, I started living by this in high school and into college is esse quam videri. And that's a Latin phrase. And it means to be rather than just to seem to be. So authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is something I hold myself to, that standard of authenticity and all aspects of my life of I'm the same person in practice that I am at home and I'm the same person out to eat with (laughs) you or out to eat with the president like I really value authenticity and being able to live by that um that essay quam videri is a very cool quote to live by it's being congruent Mm -hmm. congruent and authentic absolutely that's awesome what about a favorite book Oh, goodness. So many. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) Um, I really like The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements is um, a fantastic book, and it just kind of gets into, um, I wrote them down because I couldn't remember off the top of my head because I thought I'd be nervous. Um, (laughs) But just being impeccable with your word. Let your yes be your yes and let your no be your no. Um, Don't take anything for granted. Don't make exceptions. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Um, So I think all those things kind of resonate with me and taking that away. And then chiropractically, chiropractically, well-adjusted babies, um, anything prenatal, practice, pediatric, things like that. I love diving into um, with that. So, yeah. And kind of on that note, but as speaker wise, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to necessarily be a chiropractor, but what? Who would you say has had the biggest influence on you as a mm-hmm. chiropractor when you were in school or now? It, could, yeah. it doesn't have to be just one. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that Autumn Gore, she had the biggest influence on me. I would say that, I don't know if she knows it or not, but I she look does up. now. And yeah, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> I respect her and she taught me all of these values that have transformed the way that I look at my life and um, the way that she lives. And I just respect her so much and I'm so thankful for her mentorship through school and then Jeannie Ohm uh, just getting to listen to her and read what she, like everything that she's written and that she's done she's just such a renegade and I look up to her I'm just like man you're the godmother of chiropractic you're so amazing <laughs> uh, so those two are just definitely people that have influenced me and that I love and respect dearly right yeah we hope to have autumn yeah. on the podcast in the future so if you could put She'll in change your life okay. <laughs> good word for us <laughs> so i think one of the biggest 
problems that we have as chiropractors, especially as new students Mm -hmm. or new chiropractors after um, the whole school process, is being able to educate or speak about chiropractic and be comfortable. Yes. Would, is there anything that you would say helped you be more comfortable? Fall on my face. Every <laughs> yeah, start it start it early. Start in school. Um and that's why I tell all the students whenever I do talk to them, I say start in school, fall on your face now because it doesn't it counts, but it really counts whenever <laughs> you're out in practice. And so just doing it as much as you can, removing that fear, removing that self doubt and just believing in yourself and being sound and chiropractic and being able to communicate that. Right. And it takes practice. Everything takes practice. So what did you do during school? Like when you said fall on your face, what yeah, did you do? Yeah, for sure. I was out there with the spine at the mall, just talking, <laughs> walking around with it, that project that we had to do. <laughs> um, and then also me and uh, a good friend started the philosophy club on campus. And uh, we would be put on the spot in the middle of that club and say, what is chiropractic? What is that? And just be able to stand up and talk. And then I remember we had a group of three girls and we would go to each other's houses and just give a health talk or talk about chiropractic and uh, just being in front of people as much Mm -hmm. as you can. Right. So I think that's really important. I think it's also important to to know that not everyone Mm -hmm. is going to get chiropractic the first time but as long as you share the truth it could be months it could be and the interesting thing that i found i don't know if you found this also is they still tell people about you oh yeah even if someone just comes in for pain even though you've educated them they get it all of that yeah they'll tell everyone in the city because they get it yes absolutely Mm -hmm. and i think i really believe it's planting seeds whatever it is every conversation you're just planting a seed and if it falls upon rocky soil okay that's fine but if it really gets sown deep maybe they come and realize come to that realization in a year maybe two years three years maybe it's that day Um, but i think it's just letting go of the expectation of trying Mm -hmm. to change a person because you can't change free will um, but just allowing them the space but speaking from a space of authenticity right is there and you, you like to public, to be a public speaker? How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything that you would recommend uh, mm-hmm. someone, like a student, especially a student, right, yeah. getting them ready to speak in public or to big groups? Absolutely. What would you recommend they do? Or you doctors, because a lot of doctors that want to speak or want to go do more things. Is there something that you did that helped? I think it's just practice, practice, okay. practice, like kind of that we talked about. And then um, putting yourself out there. And saying yes, I think a lot of um, times we get in our own way, (laughs) even with this philosophy night coming up, I tried to make up every excuse in the book because I was, I'm, I'm still scared about it just Mm -hmm. because it's the philosophy, not like it is like a big deal. And so saying yes, and with believing in yourself and staying true to that and putting yourself out there is sometimes the hardest thing to do, but it's Mm -hmm. worth it. Right. And you said the philosophy night, Mm -hmm. what's. It's coming up uh, next this Thursday, I mm-hmm. believe, um, in the gym somewhere around somewhere on Parker, <laughs> um, and it's just a night of diving into the philosophy of chiropractic. Okay, and anyone can come. Anyone can come. Students, absolutely, doctors. yes, yes, okay. anybody. Okay, your mama, your daddy. They <laughs> so can all follow come. up on the time and the place. <laughs> yes, day, yes, right? I, yes. It's Thursday <laughs> sometime after I get off of practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, something I found that also worked uh, or helped me was Toastmasters. Oh, absolutely. You, you, did you ever do Toastmasters? Yes, and I was so terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> but look at you now, right? And I think yes. that it's very helpful because yeah. you have to get out there and, mm-hmm. you know, speak on your toes. They give yeah. you a topic and like, <laughs> what? Yes. And, and you have to talk about... <laughs> You know, what one time in your whole life you didn't have heat yes. or, you know, something oh s- random or strange, yeah. right? <laughs> I was so bad. At- I had just mentally blocked that out because it scarred me so bad. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely does help to do things like that. Right. I agree. And so um, how would you say that Parker, and let's just go talk about Parker seminars. How would mm-hmm. you say the Parker seminars have affected your life? If they have. Yeah, no, you know that. And they mm-hmm. have, I have seen it affect your life. And then just from learning from you and then really diving into the Parker principles and uh, um, just the history of Jim Parker, of what he created. One man, he created all of this and we're still following in his principles and his pathways to this day. And uh, it's those people that I really respect and that I really want to learn from and um, just staying true to his principles and his guidance and his wisdom. And I think that Parker Seminars does a good job of conveying that and um, 
just staying balanced with that. So I right. think that that's really helped a lot. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think it was very important for me when I could be around other doctors that had gone oh, through things. And, yes. and even if they weren't, we didn't want to practice the exact same or have exactly. the same kind of office. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, that's their way. Or yeah. Yeah. maybe I don't want to do it that way, but can you help me with this? And it, yeah. it just really helped to have that support system. And mm -hmm. I don't always ask about the Parker seminars, but I, I know they've affected both of us so much. For sure. It's right. like a family. I mm -hmm. think it's just every year or twice a year you go and you just get to connect with your family because sometimes chiropractic you are sometimes practicing by yourself or just within a small group but to be in a group of all chiropractors mm -hmm. man i tell all my people i'm like listen we work hard and we party hard because we are fully alive and it is so much fun um so i think that just having that family and that aspect has really helped me to um, right. just feel connected i agree is there anything anything else that you would like to, any words of advice or anything else you'd like to share with us about practice or life or? Just keep going. And I think it's something, live it to the fullest and don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait um, to share the story. Don't wait to live that dream or take that step or have that baby, whatever it may be. There's never a perfect time in life to start something. Um, go for it and follow your dreams. Even if you fall on your face, it's okay. That's awesome. I want to tell um, people that are listening or mm -hmm. watching that you will be at Parker Seminars uh, in yes. October. Yes, right? Excited. And of course, you have philosophy. Yes, right? yes. Uh, next Thursday, Thursday. In, in the gym, <laughs> right? Yes. And also that you will be doing a 12 hour weekend seminar mm -hmm. at the end of August, August 25th and 26th. Okay. Yes. Is that right? I think so. And I know that people are going to want to know more information uh, and maybe contact you. And I, you have said that would be okay. Can you give us how the best way to do that email whatever it might yes. be um you can do email uh gowan g-o-w-i-n at free to be chiropractic.com and then always just call me um shoot me a text call me i always have my phone on me um it's a google voice app so it goes straight to my cell phone so i'm usually always available uh, and you can just get on the website free to be chiropractic.com Find that number or the nestaddison.com and learn more information about us and getting into contact as well. But I'm in students. We have students there every week. And um, if anybody just wants to just hang out, come to the farm and we'll have a <laughs> we'll have a fire pit and a couple beers and we'll hang out. <laughs> Maybe fireside chats. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On the farm. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask to finish off with or, yeah. or ask about um, you and if students can come. Absolutely. Watch. Okay. Yeah, we have students, a ton of students, and it's so fun. I usually put them to work and say, "Hey, <laughs> you'll be up here. You're gonna work." Yes. <laughs> it's good for it's, it's good for students to see every office, right? Especially Go yes, all get over Dallas as much as you can to figure out what you don't like, what you do like, especially mm -hmm. if you're coming out and starting mm -hmm. on your own. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yes, uh, absolutely. You're an awesome person, great friend, and uh, we look forward to talking with you again in the future. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. We want to be your source for building your faith, your confidence, and your belief so you aren't afraid to share the truth. Remember, you do have the power to change lives. I want to leave you with a quote by B.J. Palmer. You never know how far-reaching something you think, say, or do today will affect the lives of, of millions tomorrow. I'm Dr. Michelle Krennic. Thank you so much for joining us for Spa Talk. We'll see you next time.